Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast and happy Wednesday. It is hump day, a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous day here at Toast HQ. I'm at Toast HQ NYC. Jax is in Toast HQ FLA. Hey, Curly, how's it going? It's going good. Happy hump day. I feel as though it feels right to be a Wednesday. You know, it's the latter half of the week. Once we're through with this episode, Claude, we're further in than we are away from it. I think that's really and exciting. I have like so many exciting things on the horizon for me today. Like what? Actually, now, like I was being sarcastic, but there really is so many exciting things happening. My final furniture furniture delivery from Crate and Barrel, I had placed this enormous order. It's come in installments. And the two big items, the pullout couch for my second bedroom where you and your family will be sleeping one day, God willing. My bed, my bed has been broken. I've been sleeping on a broken bed for like two years. And I really, I finally got myself like a real ass bed. Yeah. Custom. You I know, can't from believe Crate and you still are using that other bed. I think we so, all remember when Ben broke it. No, different bed, different oh, okay. bed. The, the one that Ben broke, that was a devastating loss because that was a real bed too. Then I was like, you know what? These beds keep breaking. I bought an actual $400 bed from Wayfair. The fact that it has lasted me six years, I just want to say speaks to Wayfair's true quality. And it had a storage drawer underneath. I got a new bed, crate and barrel with a storage drawer. I'm really excited about it. So that's happening today. My apartment will be done. That's exciting. By today. Then... I have to hit up the kosher grocer, which is always just a thrill. When I tell you my life has changed, then Do I'm you seeing- find yourself eating more protein now? Like, are you yes. all proteined up? Every single night. And so funny. So last night I went to an engagement party um, on, you know, on the Upper East, Jewish community. Let me tell you, there were two topics of conversation going around the entire party and two only. Well, three, actually. The toast. Third, no, well, four. Okay. <laughs> First was, of course, the beautiful couple, Mazel Tov, you know? Mazel, Mazel. The second, Ozempic. When I tell you, every person was talking about Ozempic. Three, Ori's, the new kosher grocer. The fruit platter for the engagement party was from Ori's. Everybody said, oh, this is such good fruit from Ori's. So, like, when I, I thought it really had only revitalized my life. When I tell you every conversation, someone was like, have you had the salad dressing? And I was have like, no. You? No, and I said, have you had the rotisserie chicken? I'm kind of the rotisserie chicken champion. People have really discovered the rotisserie chicken through me. But then, every, literally, people keep starting rumors about this grocery store. Someone's like, I heard that they're getting a frozen yogurt machine. I'm like, well, actually, I heard that too, so it might be true. But then I heard from my friend Margo, and she's a really, she saw it with her own eyes, that they are now selling pre-made briskets. Wow. That are, that are delicious. So everybody's starting rumors about this grocery store. I'm telling you, the grocery store has flipped the community on its head. That's so beautiful, but they could serve ice cream like and chicken. You know what? I I thought about that from a kosher perspective. As a grocery store, yes, as long as you're in like separate, separate sections. Kitchens, yeah. But if you're a restaurant, like with a kitchen, you're obviously only selling meat or dairy. Yeah. I guess unless you had two kitchens in your restaurant. That would be, you know, a, a high budget restaurant. And different tables too, and different serveware. Very interesting. I'm excited for you. So that's just like, and then I'm going, I'm sorry, to a concert, seeing my Queenie, Kelsey Baller Queenie, you know? Oh, very lovely. Yeah. So it's just kind of an amazing, and then by the time I'm done with the day, it's the hers day. Exactly. What about you? Busy day. I'm a little queasy today. It started last night as I was going to sleep. I was like feeling nauseous, but I was like, okay, well, I'll go to sleep then. Like, you know. What if I just took a nap? Like, it, it makes me feel like I want to lay down. So why don't I just right. stay laying? And then as I was doing my makeup this morning, I was like, hmm, yeah, I, I feel a little amiss. Can't pinpoint it. So we're just going to watch that. Oh my God, something's up with Jax, you guys. Nothing like crazy. I just, I'm in tune with my body and I'm saying I don't feel... 100%. I feel kind of like out of focus. You know when that it's happens? A, yes. So funny. I'm really not a person who's in tune with her body. I'm in tune with what's necessary, but not my body. You're not? Like you can't feel if something's a little different? No, no, no. And like sometimes I'll, I, like I'm completely fine, normal and healthy. And I'm like, oh my God, something's off. And like nothing's <laughs> off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not in tune. I feel like if you felt this way, like you would notice just like a low grade queasiness, I would say. I don't know. Maybe I need a Zofran. Are you pregnant? No. Okay. Did you check? I don't have to. It's not possible. Okay. Yeah. Um, Zofran, perhaps I don't have one. Oh, let me tell you something Gotta about ask Zofran. Around. Anyone have a Zofran? 
they need to make that shit more accessible. You know, every time I get on my soapbox, soapbox about Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro, more accessible, affordable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw Zofran in there too. You shouldn't need a prescription for that shit. It's like the only thing on the planet that actually gets rid of nausea and you need a prescription for it? Yeah, because it works. Like, stop. Stop being like a gatekeeping, girl boss. Just go. Yeah, now I'm craving one. I'm itching for one. I'm so all out because I'm so generous with mine because I feel so strongly. You are so generous with your Zofran. Zofran prescription. I literally like you won't catch me giving my Zofran to a dying person. Like I, that shit is like liquid gold. It's so amazing. Like when you're hungover, obviously I was prescribed for migraines. I got with my migraine medication Zofran because migraines can also cause nausea. And I was just, I always got double the amount of Zofran and I, they would give me five migraine pills for a month. Like fucking rude. Step it up. No, I and they would think give me one, so much Zofran. So I was super generous with it to the point that I don't have any. The greatest part of Ozempic is obviously the weight loss, but I would say coming in close second is more often than not, you get a prescription for Zofran along with it because it can cause nausea. And let me tell you, like, they should sell, drug dealers should get into that. Oh, and just to clear up some more rumors that might be started about me, I'm not on Ozempic, even though I'm nauseous. Oh my God, are people saying that? No, I haven't seen one person say it. And honestly, it's oh. a little fucking rude. I like, was going to say. It's fucking <laughs> rude. Maybe, yeah. Can't say, can't confirm or deny if I'm on Ozempic. No, I'm cackling. No, but I feel like because of what I'm saying today, people could conclude that I'm on Ozempic and I'm a big champion of the drug. But I'm um, put the rumors, future rumors to rest, even though I know it looks like I am. I'm it not. does. <laughs> it does. It's honestly a little rude that I haven't seen any speculation. All right, I'll start it. She's literally on Ozempic. I saw her shoot herself up at when I was at her house. Okay, I started <laughs> it now. Now, now people will That's really think so. That's not a rumor. That's a confirmation. Jackie O is on Ozempic. That's a confirmation, Claudia. You just have to give them crumbs. Can't confirm or deny. I can confirm. I saw her shooting it up. <laughs> That's a lie. Good. That- now, listen. You get what you asked for. Okay, yeah, I'll put it out. Now people will really be confused. They'll be like, what? But Jackie, now you really need to stay on point with your health journey. No, I know. Because <laughs> they're going to be like, oh, Zembic didn't work for her. <laughs> Yikes. Wait, okay, so last night at this engagement party, it was, I, of course, ended up in the room with the dessert and the older women. That's just like kind of where I sort of gravitate. And of course, everybody was talking about Oprah's Ozempic special. And it really, I got to see firsthand like how I feel like the impact that it's had. People were just like talking, everyone was talking about it so positive. They love the special. You know, people said it should have been longer. And it was so fabulous to kind of see it firsthand. Yeah. And I was talking to my, so it was my best friend Alicia's house. Her mom is, do you know that Esther is the biggest toaster? I know she listens to the show, yeah. But I didn't know that. No, no, every every single day. Hi, Esther. So she picks up her mom every day. And so sometimes her mom's like, no, I don't need to be picked up. She's like, no, no, you don't understand. I need to get in the car so I can listen to the toast. And, um, so she comes over to me and she's like, let me ask you a question. This may be so dumb, but like, how do I listen to old episodes? She's like, the, like, I can't get past two years ago. People have been saying and, that. And what is that? You know, Apple and Spotify, like, cut us off. We're being silenced. I feel like there's only a maximum number of episodes that they can host. Yeah. Or that they can show. host. So... I think you had to go to YouTube then. So I said, you know, thankfully the archive's always on YouTube. But for me, that's painful because YouTube is basically like a timeline of my weight loss and gains over the years. Yeah. But you also have said that you want all episodes to be gone. So I I I have said that. I think that Apple and Spotify cutting us off wouldn't be a bad thing. I think as a part of like some sort of influencer safety net, you know, podcast. Influencer protection policy. The Influencer Protection Program is like a subscription you pay yearly that after after content is, I want to say, two years old, it needs to be erased. The culture changes. We can only be held responsible for what we said in the moment, like holding somebody's feet to the fire for something they said five years ago. Like, I don't know her. I need a program like that. And it needs to be called the Influencer Protection Program. Okay, the IPP. I love that. I think we should start it. Yeah. I would do it. Even though yeah. two years, then what about like my wedding photos? Um, okay well that's why i have to post them every anniversary that's cool no, too. But that's what the influencer protection program does like they Sits weigh through. yeah like anything personal wishing a happy birthday to your spouse like of course that stays but anything you know topical or remar- a little bit you but know what if murky- you wish a happy birthday to your spouse and you're like <laughs> happy birthday r word <laughs> um well that would then be alerted by the ipp 
I don't know why you would be calling your significant other the R word, but I see what you're saying. Like it could be a joke you guys have. That right, right. Age well. In a time where it, everyone was saying that word. No, I understand. The IPP would flag that for sure. And maybe when they <laughs> felt the culture changing, that flag, that folder of R word content would be immediately washed away. Yeah. I think we're onto something. A thousand percent. But I don't want to limit it to influencers. Like it's yeah, really people comedians. Yeah, that for their jobs going forward. You know, just a social media cleansing program. So I'm glad you brought up rumors being spread about you. I don't know if you know that there's like a conspiracy theory about us. Tell me everything. And it's, it's one of those things where people think like we're like it's cooler true. and we're Hollywood it's than true. we are. I don't care what it is. It's true. So extra, extra. What is it? Our... People were blowing us up on social media yesterday for not talking about Quiet on Set, the documentary. They think we're like involved. Like, and they're like, why haven't the girls spoken about it? And it's first of all, we literally spoke about it the day before yesterday and, and day, last the, week. And the time before that. No, I saw those and, comments and that's just people to me who don't watch the show because. No, but there's like a full theory that we're like protecting Dan Schneider when if you read my book. You don't watch you know, the show. You don't watch the I, show but I haven't if you seen, think that. I haven't watched a documentary yet either, um, but I saw on TikTok yesterday, and of course it's a story today, Dan Schneider did a podcast. He did an, an interview. It was a podcast. It like was, that was, person has a podcast? I think so, no. I mean, they were sitting the in, Jackie, they were sitting in chairs with sure mics. They, they ha did they have mics? Yeah. No, they, they were just not? sitting in chairs facing each other. I think that person, the vibe I got is that person is a friend of Dan Schneider's and I think people probably like him and he felt like he wanted to sit down with Dan to clear up some rumors. That person the Hollywood reporter. is a former... iCarly star. Yes, star and they gave, It's from is the generous. Hollywood Reporter. I watched it on X. Oh, by the way, it, it, they did give it to the Hollywood Reporter. I watched it on the Hollywood Reporter's TikTok and you're right, they don't have microphones. It's not a podcast, it's just a piece of content. So funny how my brain is sort of manipulated into thinking two people in chairs looking at each other is a podcast. No, nothing about that was giving podcasts because it was so quick and brief. And if you're a it podcaster, was so weird. like we have the time to talk. That's actually so true. It was only 19 minutes. It was just like question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. The pace of it, it was so fast paced to me. I never could have mistaken it for a podcast. Yeah, there was no sort of conversation after Dan gave one of his answers. It was just like, okay, moving on. Yeah, thank you for clearing that up, even though you barely did. Moving on. Yeah, barely did. And by the way, not Dan Schneider getting on the Ozempic train. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Dan Schneider has, looks like he lost 200 pounds. Yeah, he does look slim down. Yeah. And he has a goatee. And he doesn't deserve Ozempic. It's too good for him. Yeah. Give it to someone who can't afford it, like for real, and who really needs it. Well, we'll get into that interview. So I guess without further ado, did you watch Vanderpump Rules last night? I didn't. I was at an engagement party. Right. I watched it. I'm struggling to remember what happened. If you want to table it for like maybe next week, we could do like a two episode recap because I didn't watch it and I do have Dear Toasters for today. Yeah, but no, I didn't have any pressing feelings or thoughts, so it doesn't even matter. Okay. Great. So without further ado, do, 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 here are the fast five stories that you need to know. And the fast five stories that you need to know are brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry about when you buy tickets for your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price, guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. So Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. The all in pricing shows your total upfront, so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. You can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. They're just obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. So they have deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, even an hour after it starts. It's basically the place to find last minute seats. You have exclusive flash deals, sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With zone deals, you'll pick the section and game time will pick the seats and that'll give you big time savings. And of course, the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code TOAST for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code TOAST for $20 off. Download Game Time today. It's last minute ticket, last minute tickets. It's the lowest price. And know what? It's guaranteed. Today's episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp. 
So thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring today's episode. A lot of us are spending our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and to make it a priority. And therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. If you're thinking of giving therapy a start, try BetterHelp. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's designed to be flexible and, of course, suited to your schedule. You'll fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll then get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. I feel that's probably one of the greatest benefits of Ther of BetterHelp is like a weird thing about therapy is sometimes you go to a therapist no matter how highly recommended they are and it's just not a match like on a personality level there's nothing wrong with her there's nothing wrong with you it's just not a good match so switching can be really awkward but BetterHelp makes it super easy and then when you do find a therapist that you match with it's done entirely online so whatever medium you're most comfortable with is what you can do you can video chat you can phone call you can text whatever works for you. So learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash toast today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash toast, betterhelp.com slash T-O-A-S-T. You know, there's really never a bad time to start. I feel like a lot of people try to like get into therapy at the beginning of the year, like try and make it a resolution, but just get started. It's one of those things like hashtag just do it, you know? Just do it. And you can do so at betterhelp.com slash T-O-A-S-T. Today's episode is also brought to you by Prolon. These days, a lot of people are learning about all the benefits of fasting, like weight loss, mental and physical performance, and gut health. But they worry about the whole not eating part. That's exactly why Prolon was created. Introducing Prolon, a revolutionary plant-based nutrition program that nourishes the body while making cells believe they're fasting. Researched and developed for decades at the University of Southern California Longevity Institute and backed by leading U.S. medical centers, Prolon helps promote healthy blood sugar, support cardiovascular health, and reduce abdominal fat. Prolon is not a diet. It is science. It's based on Nobel Peace Prize winning discoveries in medicine. And this all starts with their five-day program. Snacks, soups, and beverages all designed to keep your body in a fasting state. It's unlike anything you've ever experienced. It's a no wonder why thousands of doctors now recommend Prolon to support healthy blood sugar and cardiovascular health. Right now, Prolon is offering the Toast listeners 10% off their five-day nutrition program. Go to prolonlife.com slash toast. That's P-R-O-L-O-N. L-I-F-E dot com slash toast for this special offer. It's prolonlife.com slash toast. It's really a revolution that's taking place in the fasting um, that helps weight loss, mental and physical performance and gut health. And if you're just tired of fasting or cleanses that leave you hungry and exhausted instead of rejuvenated and energized, try Prolon, the scientifically proven meal plan solution that you've been waiting for. So head to P-R-O-L-O-N life dot com slash toast for a special offer of 10% off their five day nutrition program. Thank you. Are you ready for our first story? I am. Dan Schneider responds in an on-camera video to disturbing revelations in Quiet On Set. So Dan Schneider, he posted the video to his YouTube channel at Dan Warp. And oh, did? yes, it was a 20-minute interview with Boogie, who plays Tebow on iCarly. So people have seen the allegations in Quiet On Set, the dark side of kids TV that has been airing over the last few days. And Dan Schneider is being... Held accountable. Held accountable. So he is asked about some of the more egregious allegations made in that series. He said, quote, facing my past behaviors, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret. I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. He spoke about the series allegations that he continuously requested female writers to massage him in front of other writers and crew members. He said it was wrong. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I'm embarrassed that I did it then. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. Additionally, I apologize to the people who were walking around Video Village or wherever they happened because there were lots of people there who witnessed it and who also may have felt uncomfortable. So I owe them an apology as well. He talks about the jokes that have been deemed inappropriate now that were made on the show and he apologizes for those while also saying you know there were a lot of people whose job it was to approve that to, whose job it was to approve that who wrote that and you know everybody gave those things the green light but overall he's saying I'm so sorry these things shouldn't have happened I wouldn't do it now I wish I didn't do it then um okay so first of all I thought the turnaround time was really crazy Almost like he knew, like like this was pre-recorded, like he knew what was going to be said about him. Like maybe he got a screener because really yesterday was, I feel like yesterday 
the second episode, the second part of the documentary had dropped, but I think much more of the more egregious allegations. And literally, like, while it's going viral, like, the second people start talking about it, he drops his thing. Like, I just thought the timing was kind of crazy, no? Mm, I don't think so. I think we've been talking about the fact that this thing was coming out for a few weeks. So I'm sure he knew, and I'm sure they reached out to him for comment. I'm sure they knew this was going to be a referendum on him. And I think that his strategy for combating it is to like get ahead of it whatever they say like I am going to put out a statement explaining myself and so he saw whatever was from the other night and immediately like got on the horn he maybe even had a plan for how, what he wanted to do a video ex- setting the record straight with a friend and someone who people might trust because they were also on set at these times and just sort of clear the air yeah no that's fair um I did think you know first of all what a tool I don't even, what's his name? The interviewer? Uh, Boogie. Like, probably some of the biggest loser energy I've ever seen radiating from another human being. Um, But, you know, and Dan thinks he's subtle. You know, so many of the allegations were around how, you know, black actors and the, like, the, um, there was like a lack of diversity and the actors who were hired who were you know diverse who were black were not given like any attention any sort of opportunity so him sitting there with a former castmate who's also black like it was like you're not being subtle dan like what oh no never mind yeah no as if that nullifies what other people are saying i feel like there are probably a lot of people who have worked with dan schneider who would say good things about him who maybe had a positive experience working for him who were maybe stars of their show and it was in Dan's best interest to be nice to them like I don't think Dan treated everyone the same and that everyone's going to say the same things about him it's not surprising to me that he has people who would champion him and and say nice things about him that there's people who say the opposite yeah and it's also like I feel because these are all child actors it's so um I feel like how every each kid had a different experience is so dependent on their parents' involvement. Mm -hmm. And like Jeanette McCurdy, you know, stating in her book, not very explicitly, but referring to Dan as the creator and how he was super manipulative and like literally like a psychopath. Um, And she also, her book is called I'm Glad My Mom Died. Like no one was looking out for her. And then with Drake Bell and Amanda Bynes, like those are also two big stars of this documentary. Amanda Bynes has a very... um, sordid relationship with her parents and especially at that time when she was bringing in a lot of money it became a big issue drake bell had wanted to become emancipated from his parents so he really sort of like surveyed the kids who were either came from broken homes or had complicated relationships with their parents and sort of preyed on that because it leaves these young kids very vulnerable yeah but i'm sure a plenty of other kids whose parents were on set who didn't fall into this web would say oh right. working with dan launched my career and Right, because then you things. think about like Ariana Grande. Yeah, you do. Think and about Josh. Ariana Grande. And like Liz Gillies. These are all kids who have big careers and who I think would, would state that they had fine experiences. I'm sure, you know, ch- being a child star comes with its own host of whatever. But when it comes to this particular documentary, would say that they had fine experiences. And I think a lot of them would credit that to the fact that their parents were around like 100% of the time. Yeah. So. It's very disturbing. And I think it like I think a lot of people um, like for me, like the great tragedy is really emblematic in what happened to Amanda Bynes. Yeah. And there's so much footage in this documentary and I haven't watched a documentary, but I've seen so many clips, you know, unaired moments behind the scenes recordings that are so fucking weird and gross. And now, of course, when you go back and watch certain scenes that were either aired or not aired with hindsight, like it's it's weird but when you were a kid you didn't think you weren't disgusting as a kid like you just thought it was like funny haha like yeah that's what dan said too and he also said cut those scenes out like take them out but the thing is the damage is done those actors already experienced it and they're forever changed because of it like what's cutting no one really is watching those old shows now no cutting it is not gonna help anyone he also said like in in an effort to make things better for child actors going forward that there should be a licensed counselor on set whose job it is to evaluate each child and make sure that they really want to be on tv that they're not just doing it for their parents that they know what comes along with being a working child actor with being famous etc etc okay for sure but people like dan schneider should also uh like go the fuck away yeah no there are so many issues with that first of all like of course, a kid who who has a penchant for acting and singing wants to be on TV and they're going to do and say anything to get that position. And they have no idea what they're signing on to, even if you tell right. them what they're signing on to. This is a child. They can't make like actual 
decisions. Real serious decisions for themselves. Also, if their parents are pressuring them to do it, like you get this job and, and maybe your family needs the money and the kid's going to talk to the therapist. I don't want to do it. Like when you know your parents need you to do it, it's just dishonest. Also, what are the odds that this counselor is an honest, good faith actor and right. not some other Giving predator? massages. It's giving, yeah, no. Like that's an easy job for a predator to get, huh? 1,000%. Also, I feel like this is so crazy because there have been so many documentaries that like get, you know, so viral and it really, you know, breaks open what was going on. Like Larry Nasser, for example. Very rarely does the person then come out. I feel like when these documentaries are made, the person who is being exposed is either like in jail, dead, off the grid. It's so rare like that we hear from them that same day. It's felt so weird. It is weird, but the difference is, is from what I've seen, like what Dan Schneider is being accused of is not like illegal behavior. He's not incriminating himself by apologizing for these things. Right, right. You know, by Which, being a mean boss, inappropriate, mm -hmm. bad... Uh, on inappropriate jokes like nothing that he's apologizing for are things that like he could go to jail for or anything like that with Larry Nasser and, and, and yeah. those sorts of people like no they can't come and say I'm sorry I did that like lock him up yeah but I also feel like and we have been for years um you know, if you like keep up with media, like you know Dan Schneider, you know the name, you know that like this was a very, very long time coming. Um and I feel like the rumors the, about him are worse than the allegations what, that have come out from this documentary. There are other things too that we've all yes. sort of heard that I guess they're not addressing in the documentary. Which is why he was able to then, you know, go on and refute those claims in, a, in an interview. Because if they were the real allegations, what we've all heard for many, many years, he could never, you know, speak on that because it would he would go to jail. Well, he certainly couldn't apologize. The only thing he could say right. is I didn't do those things. That's all he right. could say. And that's not even, that's not the tone of this interview. He's not saying I did not do the things that they're saying in that documentary. He said, I did them, it was wrong, and I'm sorry. Right, but there's more. Like, but right? cool, you're sorry. The damage is done. Like, sorry. Yeah, like, no, we don't give a fuck, like, for real. Yeah, sorry that you're embarrassed today and that you're having a bad week. I don't give a shit. No, like, not gonna find me caring. It was an interesting strategy, though, because it definitely <laughs> has you being like, hmm, if he's... Being so candid and taking accountability, it, maybe he's not as guilty as you would think. No, I think it's like, I, I think what his strategy was, but I'm seeing right through it is like, yeah, let me take accountability for all the things that like won't put me in prison that, you know, aren't the greatest things, but they're not as bad as what I've really been accused of. Like, oh yeah, I yelled at some writers and I made weird jokes. Pale in comparison to what, you know, we've all heard for years. So taking accountability for those things makes him look like an honest person, but we're, we can't be fooled, you yeah. know, especially when just the rumors have been around about him for so long, like so long. Yeah. No. No, it's, but I guess in the same breath that people are talking about quiet on set now, they're also talking about this Dan Schneider interview as opposed to it just being about like these nasty things about Dan Schneider, you know? He's just like really gross and he needs to just go away, like for real. I, he had gone away though, yeah? I, right, so him, he's not like a person who, works is public facing all the time like he didn't even really need to respond he's extremely wealthy he could have just continued like living his private life yeah he could just be like a freak who's obsessed with the attention and like can't let people talk about him without him coming out and clearing his name for sure even though like people have been talking about him for so long he's never not mainstream no not mainstream but former castmates remember when Jeanette McCurdy was on Vine she was making all those she was clearly having some sort of like episode and she was like making all these cryptic TikToks about Dan Schneider like there have been many many moments over the years where we've talked about it never to the point you're right where it became like mainstream and viral content but it's been spoken about for so many years and he really has just dip dive duck dive and dodge you know yeah he's such a freak he's so disgusting looking like hey yeah so I haven't watched documentary, but now I want to, but I wanted to watch it this before just so that we yeah. could speak on it so that people don't think we're covering up for Dan Schneider. When I see those comments, like that's a person who has never watched The Toast a day in their life because we've been talking about Dan Schneider since 2017. Jackie and I, when our show was owned by Verizon, we were like obviously talking about Dan Schneider, like two girlies would, like right. talking about how he's a freak and a pedophile. And we Alleged. literally got called, right, 
we got called in by Verizon like legal team. We they had to like, do like a two like, hour compliance. Stuff like that. We're like, what do you mean? It's true. We literally <laughs> had to sit in like a two hour presentation like about compliance and defamatory language. Like it was so boring, first of all. And I was like, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. It was actually probably really helpful. Just I agree. Not for Dan Schneider. Doing but what we do, it was a good lesson to learn. Just throw allegedly in front of anything you say and you're totally safe. Yeah, that was really the lesson. But just to goes to show you that we were called in in 2017 over this. So if you think we're part of the cover up, you haven't been paying attention. And you're not and fans like we, of this show. Like, I don't know how you stumbled on yesterday's YouTube episode, but go away. Jackie, literally, how many days can go by before I bring up Jeanette McCurdy's book? Like, what are you guys talking about? No, literally. And the thing is, I'm talking to them right now, but they're not listening because they don't watch this show. They just commented on yesterday's episode. No, and by the way, Jackie and I, like, we're pretty wishy-washy on certain things, right? Yeah. You know, one day we hate this person. We're always changing our minds. I don't want to say wishy-washy. We're open-minded. One thing I feel like we really don't move on from is like child stuff. Like we're never going to be back on Balenciaga. Like right. the kid stuff, like we we can't be bought, you know? Yeah. No, there's no turning a new leaf on kids, so like, you know? On kid stuff. I agree. Like I don't care how sorry you are, like for real. There is no absol- absol- absolution. Yeah. Abs- absolution. You've been absolved. You've been absolved. Absolution? Feels right. Absolution. Feels it right. feels wrong, actually. Abs- absolution. Abstinence? No. Absolution, formal release from guilt. Oh, yeah, there is none. Like, seriously, I once you meet your maker, you can work it out then. Yeah. So that's what's new with Dan Schneider. He's got a turkey neck. Are you body shaming? I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really, really am. Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Beyonce says her new album, Act Two, Cowboy Carter, was born out of an experience where she did not feel welcome. So Beyonce has announced her next album called Act Two, Cowboy Carter on social media. She show, it has a picture of herself wearing a red, white, and blue outfit on a horse and holding up an American flag. As we know, this next album from Beyonce is going to be a country album in the elk of her two songs that she's released called Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages. She put out a statement yesterday with the announcement saying, uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart to all the supporters of Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages. I feel honored to be the first black woman with the number one single on the hot country songs chart. That would not have happened without the outpouring of support from each and every one of you. My hope is that years from now, the mention of an artist's race as it relates to releasing genres of music will be irrelevant. She said this album has been over five years in the making it was born out of an experience that I had years ago where I did not feel welcomed and it was very clear that I wasn't but because of that experience I did a deeper dive into the history of country music and studied our rich musical archive it feels good to see how music can unite so many people around the world while also amplifying the voices of some of the people who have dedicated so much of their lives educating on our musical history the criticisms I faced when I first entered this genre forced me to propel past the limitations that were put on me Act two is a result of challenging myself and taking my time to bend and blend genres together to create this body of work. I have a few surprises on the album and have collaborated with some brilliant artists who I deeply respect. I hope that you can hear my heart and soul and all the love and passion that I poured into every detail and every sound. Okay, so many thoughts. Well, people then figured out like what po- we, what things she was talking about when she was entered the genre and didn't feel welcome. Unwelcoming and experience. I remembered that too when she did that CMA performance. I thought it was fabulous. Like I loved it. She I did love a CMA performance with the Dixie Chicks. The Sing- Chicks. At the time, they were called the Dixie Chicks. Okay. One of her songs. Hmm. I don't remember any of this really. Oh, I do, and I actually remember talking about it on the toast. And I wonder if she's talking about not feeling welcome. By, like, the fans or by, like, fellow country artists? The vibe I got was backstage unwelcoming because I think then I saw an old article that Beyonce talked about, like, not feeling welcome at the CMAs and Mm. she felt like backstage everyone was, like, kind of giving them looks because the chicks are also sort of... They're like a lightning rod. Yeah, I feel like there's dynamics with it. They might have enemies, too, in the CMAs. They're definitely, like, you know... I don't know what the right word is, but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, so again, then also maybe the fans, and I think the reception to the performance, the performance has been scrubbed from the internet. You can't even watch it. 
Wait, that's so crazy. I remember thinking, like, thank God. Like, when somebody so cool as Beyonce, like, gives her sort of approval to the CMAs, like, we've been trying to get people onto country for so many years. Like, Beyonce has that power. I remember being like, yeah, the more the merrier. And I do remember the fans being, like, lame about it. Yeah, I, I feel like it must have been a bad reception because you can't even watch the video now. Because, of course, now I want to go see and be like, oh, what'd they do? Oh, I didn't realize it was scrubbed. Yeah, it's not. Ugh, it's no loser longer. Loser energy. Does anyone have an old TiVo? Yeah, not we the could TiVo. watch it. Well, then she's sort of teasing in this caption, you know, working with people, collabs, and we have to sort of sit here and just guess. Chris Can Stapleton. You, well, read again who she said she was collaborating with because it sounds like it might be mostly black artists. I have a few surprises on the album and have collaborated with some brilliant artists who I deeply respect. A few side sentences up. I did a deeper dive into the history of country music and studied our rich musical archive. It feels good to see how music can unite so many people around the world while also amplifying the voices of some of the people who have dedicated so much of their lives educating on our musical history. Oh, okay, maybe not. That maybe just not. felt like sort of the um, genesis and the research for this project and like, mm -hmm. but as far and as- And also how country music is really for everyone. Like, Yeah. As far okay, as collaborations, okay. no, I feel like she might be collaborating with some big country artists. Okay, I would not mind a Beyonce Darius Rucker collab. Like, I feel like Darius Rucker has kind of put the like black country music fandom on his back for so many years. And I think Beyonce should reward him for his good work, you know? Yeah. I I don't see it. I don't see it musically, like sonically. I, I agree. They're very different. I really do see I do like, see Chris Stapleton. Because he collabs. He loves a collab. He collabs. He's a. DTC down to collab. But also, I feel like sound wise, he's very soulful and very. Um, no, so it's also a good word. And I also yeah. feel like, as far as like the mixing of genres, like there's a, a crossover. Yeah, I think it would sound really beautiful. I feel like that could be. And then maybe some artists that we don't know as well yet. I don't think it's going to oh, be like, you know. Luke you know who Holmes I feel like she's going to do? No. And Luke Bryan. N please, no. Uh, do you know who I feel like she's going to do a collab with? Uh, 100%. Actually, I'm calling it right now. The War and Treaty. Okay. Remember I told you about that wife-husband duo? Yeah, yeah. Who I saw at the CMAs. They're really, they just did a collab with Zach Bryan. I feel like they're really up and coming and they have, they're amazing like vocally and I feel like Beyonce's going to platform them and I think that'd be sick. Well, also, Marin Morris had um, commented on Beyonce's statement saying drag them queen because you know she's on the outs with country music so do you think no no I don't think Beyonce's gonna work with her I think that's the antithesis Marin just left country and Beyonce's entering they're two ships passing in the night yeah you but do you think it sounds like from this statement like Beyonce's like coming into the world of country music like wants to be a part of it Yes, wants to like really sort of unite all different fandoms. I think she's coming into it like peacemaker, like with, you know, waving the white flag. Not coming in and being like, I'm mad about five years ago. I'm going to do your genre better than you. Oh. That's not I what get I'm that. getting from this statement. No, no. It's getting like really like music heals, music unites, and I'm going to be that force. Yeah. Agreed. That's what I had thought. That's what I had thought too. But then like Marin Morris, I feel like is feeling like drag them. Ma drag I think who? Marin Morris read it differently. And I think Marin read it incorrectly. Unless she's like saying drag those who made you feel unwelcome. Well, yeah, yeah. But I, I felt that the overall sentiment of Beyonce's caption, and I actually really appreciate her giving, I feel like she doesn't really give us like this much insight ever. Like she just releases her music and it speaks for itself. But I feel like her, she definitely left it in a very sort of positive, uplifting tone. Yeah. I agree. I'm excited to hear the album. No, let me tell you, I'm I'm on my way to Stanhood. Like, seriously, all aboard. I cannot wait. Oh, I mean, it comes out kind of soon. Also, I love the name Cowboy Carter. Yeah. The artwork. Perfection. Gorgeous. Like, obsessed with, like, that's so my aesthetic. Like, I just, I'm loving. Beyonce's doing country and she's doing it right. Yeah, so far, so good. I think it's when does the album come out? 10 days. Thank you. Like normal lead time. We I'm appreciate it. And you've a given us lead time. And you've given us two songs. Thank you. Yeah. So that's very exciting. See you in 10 days. Next Friday. Countdown's on. Do you think she would do a Casey Musgraves collab? 
Like, I'm thinking of who's really hot right now in country music and and not sort of mainstream. Like, obviously, Morgan Wall and Luke Combs, but I'm thinking, like, Casey Musgraves, Zach Bryan. So I think that Casey Musgraves, like, I see what you're saying, but I don't think that will make it onto the album. Because I also feel like, you know, Casey's very... Um, like progressive within the community yeah. of the country, but still remains country. No, I, I hear what you're saying. It's a good call, but I don't think it will be. Okay. But it's a good call. I'm like, I'm so curious. Drop a comment. Who do you think Beyonce's going to collab with? Or should collab with? Yeah. I feel oh, like I, I mean, made some should, good calls. Should. We could be here all day. Will? Should Luke Combs. Will? It's Chris Stapleton. But she Chris, should. Yeah. It, yeah, I honestly really Chris Stapleton. Yeah. Okay, ready for our next story? What number? Three. Yeah. Kate Middleton's medical records have been part of a hospital security breach. The hospital where Kate Middleton underwent abdominal surgery in January is reportedly experiencing a security beach, breach involving the Princess of Wales' medical records. An investigation is underway at the London Clinic over claims that at least one staffer attempted to access her files, the Daily Mail reported. Quote, this is a major security breach and incredibly damaging for the hospital given its unblemished reputation for treating members of the royal family. Damn. No, and this is truly why we can't have nice things. Like... This people got too insane and it was all fun until it wasn't. This is so disgusting. And like, this is what I was saying yesterday. Like, the party's over. The buck stops here. And people can't let it go. They, you, you know, they can't just like let something be bygones be bygones and let like a good thing have happened. They have to ruin it. And that's what yeah. happened. So good job. Congratulations. You played yourself. This is absolutely insane, but also makes me feel like ultimately the version of the story that we're getting is a version of the truth because the staffer access her medical records. If there was something wild in there, I feel like they would have made it public. Otherwise, what were they doing? And I want to say, like, I feel as though a lot of things, nothing in this world is sacred, like nothing really. But I feel like the oath of the HIPAA oath, for the most part, like people really, really take seriously. Yeah. And they respect it. And you don't hear a lot about like, and celebrities, you know, are human beings. So they have all sorts of health issues, pregnancies, things like that. And people in the medical field, I'm sure, you know, who live in, you know, work at Cedar Sign, I know plenty. And I feel like it's kind of this oath that's really sort of respected. And I love that. And so when I hear situations like this, remember uh, Scott Disick? when he was in that rehab yeah. Zoom thing, HIPAA violation, one of the, for the most part, people really respect it, both people who work in the medical field, but also people in the waiting rooms, you know, fellow patients, people really respect it. Though they haven't so, taken the oath, but yeah. No, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like even regular people, I forget um, who I was having this conversation with, but you know, like celebrities have to go to the OBGYN mm -hmm. and you know, when they're pregnant, they're hiding a pregnancy, but for the, even if they see someone, for the most part, there is this sort of unwritten thing. You see celebrity in the doctor's room, like you, you're not gonna really share that. Um, so when something like this happens, it's always really disappointing. Yeah, no, this is insane. I hope that Sapphire is found and fired swiftly. No, no, and like, you know, walked through the streets. Shame. <laughs> yeah. Because what are you doing at first? You could sell it to TMZ. Like, you're disgusting. Yeah, which makes me feel like there was nothing to sell. Just if we're going to get back to the... Sure, the sure, if we're going to conspiracy. If, yeah, get back to the conspiracy. Like, they didn't find what they were looking for, clearly. Or she wasn't able to access it because it's... You know, like you said, they have an unblemished record. They're obviously very secure. And some, you know, low-life nurse can't get access to everyone's files. Yeah, attempted to access. Right. Okay. It's giving low-life nurse. <laughs> it is. I kind of love the term low-life. It's so insulting. And I don't really use it a lot. Because no, if you do, it becomes... That's why it's insulting. Because it's not overused. Yeah, but like being called... A, if somebody ever called me a low life like I just I, I seriously I would just end it like end it all. that's it's horrible yeah but don't do something that warrants being called a low life nurse you don't think it was a doctor administrator it's got to be a nurse oh, I'm sorry did I assume uh, yeah you read I, one staffer okay I'm sorry for assuming but it was 1000 percent a nurse no <laughs> yeah yeah. Oh my God, I totally assumed. And I made an ass out of you and me. I'm so sorry, but it was. But you stand by the assumption. Yeah. And yeah. I, let's not get into it, Ashley Jessica RN. I respect and adore nurses. They are, you know, our, our 
society's lifeblood, our brave, I respect, but it was definitely one of them. I respect and I think, RNs, and I think an honest real nurse, nurses. I think an honest nurse would agree with me. Yeah. But this wasn't an honest nurse. It was a low life nurse. <laughs> Hi. Okay, ready for our next story? No, because I forgot to tell you how cute you look today. Oh my gosh, thank you. I got this favorite daughter sweatshirt from, from um, Fashion Pass. From so Fashion did I. Pass, one of our sponsors. It definitely, I would never wear it in front of you because it's like beyond rude, but I see you obviously had no qualms about wearing that in front of me. No, because I like, I like it. it. And it's cute. I like the color of it because I feel like it's a nice color to wear on the show brings. I feel like it's one of my colors. Yeah, I need to start wearing more of my colors. I wore my color last night and everybody said it looked so gorgeous. Like what color? I was talking about it. Like it was like a a wintry blue. That's everyone's color. No offense. It's such a gorgeous it's true. color. I feel like yeah, you know what? Yeah, it's more so like is this an ugly color? Yeah, is this a, a flattering color for the human face? Right. That's a beautiful color for anyone. Honestly, I've not seen someone look bad in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before we dive in, and I'm actually not ready because I wanted to tell you that the last two stories are brought to you by Hero Bread, a brand that Ben Soffer is so obsessed with. He actually reached out to him because he wanted to invest. He was like, I feel so strongly about this company. We have Hero Bread in our house all the time because, you know, Ben and I are on our health journeys. And if you're afraid of carbs, we get it. Carb heavy foods are often the ones that we love the most. And Hero Bread is out here making the same delicious favorites, but they are free of consequences or compromises. They have remade carby, empty calorie bread products into fluffy, delicious versions that include no net carbs, zero grams of sugar, and fewer calories, plus, plus, excuse me, protein and fiber. So we have tons of Hero Bread products. We have bread like for sandwiches, we have tortillas. They really taste very good but they are so much better for you and this is something i used to like roll my eyes out because they really like all these companies i'm sorry like most of them taste like crap hero bread is the real deal it's zero to one grams of net carbs zero sugar and they're high in fire fiber they're delicious and flavorful so they're soft and fluffy and you will really like feel an, a refreshing experience when you bite into a hero bread sandwich there's something for every craving so they have sliced bread loaves buns we've had those on our hamburgers very good and the tortillas where i like to make my sort of tortilla pizza i don't know if you guys know i like that that a lot Excellent. So don't give up bread. And don't give up being a breadhead. Hero Bread is offering 10% off your order when you go to hero.co and use code TOAST at checkout. That's toast, T-O-A-S-T, at hero.co, H-E-R-O dot C-O. Today's episode is also brought to you by ASPCA Pet Health Insurance. Your pet is one of a kind. I feel like this is a very appropriate sponsor for me because with my, you know, first love, Theo, we actually did not have pet insurance. I thought that was like like one of the dumbest things I've ever did. And look how it paid off. Like I ended up with crazy bills. Um, before I even got Romeo, uh, the first thing I did was get pet health insurance. And it's really important that you do that because your pet is one of a kind and so is their journey. Every playful moment is a memory in the making, but sometimes our cats and dogs are a little too good at getting into trouble. And that's why you should really check out ASPCA pet health insurance. Explore their coverage their program offers customizable accident and illness plans, making it easier for pet parents like you to help your pet get the health care that they need. The ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program has been around for over 18 years. They have helped more than 600,000 pets during that time. They allow you to customize your plan, help ensure that your pet's plan is as unique as they are, because vet bills can really add up, especially when you're least expecting it. It's simple. Use their app to submit a claim, and you'll receive reimbursement for eligible vet bills directly into your bank account. So explore their coverage via visit ASPCA pet insurance dot com slash toast that's ASPCA pet insurance dot com slash toast ASPCA pet insurance dot com slash toast this is a paid advertisement insurance is underwritten by either Independence American Insurance Company or United States Fire Insurance Company and produced by PTZ Insurance Agency Limited the ASPCA is not an insurer and is not engaged in the business of insurance check out ASPCA pet insurance dot com slash toast Thank you, La. You're welcome. Our next story, tired Kyle Richards is reacting to her niece Paris Hilton bashing Mauricio Umansky. Yes. So we spoke last week about what Paris Hilton said about the clip from Buying Beverly Hills. And now Kyle's on Amazon Live talking about what Paris said. She said, I'm just kind of tired of hearing about everything over and over again. Um, she said that she thought, uh, she was like, for me, it was like, oh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion is done. Thank God I can exhale and relax a little bit. 
And then I was like, oh, not too soon, Kyle. There's more stuff coming. She said, my family's all in the public eye, and it's weird to think that I'm on television, my niece is on television, my sister's on television, on her show, and she's been on my show, my family's on television, my daughter's. It's a lot. Yeah, I mean, it is a lot to keep apart. Like, Paris has her Paris own show. Paris Love. Kath, Real Housewives. Kathy's on Real Housewives and Paris and Love. Then Mauricio is on Buying Beverly Hills and Kyle's daughters are on that show mm-hmm. too. And it's like everyone has to keep track of what everyone's saying all the time. And you have to keep talking about what everyone's saying. And she's so right. Like with the Richard sisters, like they've been fighting since season one. And they have really been fighting about the same sort of kind of Roman Empire moments in their family. Like they keep rehashing the same five things. You know, you stole my goddamn house. Rick and Mauricio, like the same couple of things. And I feel like that's so classic family beef. Yeah, well, I just watched part three of Beverly Hills. Kathy came out, and what they said was, it's like, it feels like Kathy and Kyle are always fighting, but they both, without, you know, looking at each other, were able to say the exact amount of fights that they've had in their life. Right. Three. It's three topics. Three, as well. No, and it's also like three blow up fights that are kind of the reason for all of the other ancillary bouts of not speaking, but they've only had three fights in their life, which is pretty good for sisters. No, and I feel like it's really actually relatable to um family arguments. Oh my god, she got her Zo friend, you guys. Are you feeling okay? I, no, I, I was feeling queasy. I, I asked Zach to just go into my medicine pouch. I thought maybe I might have one. Because it's good to have one of everything in a medicine pouch. If I could give well, it person. That looks like tip. you have three. I had three. This well, is gonna I'm wishing change you a the speedy game. recovery. Oh, I mean Zofran is fast acting. It's literally magic. I'm obsessed with it. Maybe we could get a Zofran sponsorship. I mean, I've been waiting for an Ozempic sponsorship, so. Don't we have the sponsor who, like, does, like, the telehealth? We do, but I meant, like, with the real company, like, Ozempic, with uh, Novo Nordisk. Free product. Right, for life. You need to be, like, what Chloe does for that migraine company. Okay, let's talk about that migraine company, (laughs) Nurtech OTD. Their commercials with Chloe and Lady Gaga are so insane how much money do you think Nurtech OTD spent on those two celebrities a good amount like if Travis Kelsey got paid 20 million for Pfizer Mm -hmm. and 10 million maybe no that's a lot more oh I was gonna say less a national commercial I would say when he signed that Pfizer deal he was less famous than Khloe Kardashian and Lady Gaga that's true but that commercial plays more Really? Nurtek OTD is fucking everywhere. Damn, I never Lady thought Lady Gaga about on the piano. OTD money. Oh, and they got true in there. And they got true in there. Oh, yeah. I think about Nurtek OTD money constantly. So interesting. And I'm sure, I hope she actually uses it. Like, I, I wonder if it's actually good for her migraines. Like, I know, because Chloe's, to put Chloe's me, spoken for years about migraines. If anyone wants to put me in a Rise of Triptan commercial, I'll talk all day. Yeah, here are the drugs that I would, like, put my, my weight behind in terms of their efficacy. Ozempic, of course. I'm literally the poster child for it. Zofran, obsessed, goes in tandem with the Ozempic. Advil. When I tell you, oh, I fucking love Advil. There is not a problem in my life Advil hasn't solved. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's really it. Like, those three. Like, I love a Tum, too. They really work, but... Xanax. Not prescribed, but I like it. (laughs) Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Opioids, and I'm kidding. No, I haven't taken a Xanax in so long. Me neither. Like, I don't really like do drugs, so. No, not since before any pregnancy. Motherhood. Yeah, before right. motherhood. Now, like, what am I doing on Zan? You like, barred out? You no, you couldn't be, like, <laughs> zonked out. Like, no. No. Unless, like, you had a real prescription for it, which you literally don't. Mm-mm. No. Um, How did we get to Nurtech? Oh, you were taking your Zofran. Zofran. But we were talking about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Anyways, what's good to know is that Kim and... Kathy are on good terms right now I feel like they have been for a while like I think once Kathy came on the show it became kind of clear that like Kyle and her you know history of being on the show and talking about the family stuff was really sort of like a polarizing thing and a huge reason why the the sisters could really never get on the same page for very long yeah but then they had the falling out from last season about the Aspen night yep and now they've worked past that and now they are good again. And Kathy's really like just was supporting her and standing by her when she was talking about all the stuff with Mauricio. And she really just needed a sister and, and Kathy was being a good sister. No, I love Kathy. Yeah, no, it was, it was really nice to have her back. It's funny, she wasn't on the season for one minute and she's at the reunion. 
Because that's queen behavior. Like when, no matter how like quote unquote irrelevant you are to the storyline, like you're the most interesting part. Yeah, it's true. So yeah, everyone in the Richards Hilton Umansky family on their reality shows, it's like kind of funny. It is. Like you can't keep track of what everyone's saying. I guess that's like us with our podcasts. Totally. You know, and then you hear like Ben said something on his and you have to respond to it. And like, and then Margo and I, said and I will. on Redheads. And I will respond. Margo's always saying crazy stuff on Redheads. Is she? Kind of. I, like now it's where she goes to make her announcements. I know. That's like really huge for your brand. I know. I'm very excited about it and I plan to exploit it. As you should. Like she told Redheads exclusive that she was moving. If you guys ha- didn't even know that, you should listen to the new episode of Redheads. Exactly. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? <sighs> yeah. It's, it's actually, not a goodbye. It's a see you later. And we still have Dear Toasters. It's actually the perfect fifth story because Travis Kelsey is in talks to host Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader reboot. Oops. Obsessed. Travis Kelsey is capitalizing on his newfound fame. The Kansas City Chief Star is reportedly in talks to host a reboot of the Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, which would stream via Amazon Prime Video. Two insiders told Variety on Tuesday that the game show would feature celebrity guests rather than children. Despite his oh. interest in the program, producers are hesitant to extend an offer Wait. over questions of his availability. Rather than the children? How do you have Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader without the fifth graders? Rather than children. I don't know. Like, you need both. You need... I mean, you don't really need the fifth graders because yeah, it's you're like answering fifth, fifth grade, grade level. Yeah. Right. But that the kids were so funny and snarky. I Although, I do love, you know, putting less children after we were just talking about quiet on set, like, getting children out, out, off of those sets. I do like that. But when it comes to the show, like, those kids were hilarious. That was the whole point. Yeah. And that Travis, like, interacting with little fifth graders, like, that's the magic, no? Yeah. It's a really cute idea, and I'm sure he's trying to branch out. I think there's a very intentional team behind him as Mm -hmm. he, like, makes, enters a new chapter of his career. He's still playing football, but one day he won't be. And just like he did SNL, and he does his podcast, and now there might be other hosting opportunities for him. We know he's a TV star. He did Catching Kelsey. Great show. A thousand percent. And this show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, is like a beloved huge American classic. So, and that's so him. I think it's actually really brilliant. I just don't know the creative of the, of the show if I agree with it. Without kids, you mean? Yeah, like it was so, like very young Sheldon energy. Yeah, I think it could work without kids. They should really have that kid host the show. Young Sheldon. Even though he's old Sheldon Teenage now. Teenage Sheldon. I'll just really never be okay with like, you know, specifically young boys like going through puberty on television it's really it's just never it's really uncomfortable for everyone brad we know so one of my least favorite things imagine how they feel no no i know and i imagine like they you know years from now will be like why the fuck were my like most horrible awkward years Broadcast for all of America to see. And then they'll look at their bank account and they'll say, okay. That's why. That's fine. I'll yeah, allow yeah, so it. Yeah, so true. So <laughs> true. Um, okay, so those were the Fast Five stories. And we're going to get into Dear Toasters, our weekly advice segment, where you can write into us either head over to thetoastpodcast.com. There's a little submission box there, totally anonymously. Or email us, deartoasters at gmail.com. What are you going through? Do you need advice from your two favorite squirrel friends? We'll help you. And today, we've got a note from a sober mother. Hi, Swirlies. I'm a sober mother of two. I recently started making some mom friends at my son's preschool. Nobody knows that I'm sober, and on play dates when somebody has offered me a cocktail, I've always tried to defer while not disclosing my situation. I am not ashamed of my sobriety. I'm actually very proud. It will be 12 years in May, but I also just met these women, and I'm not sure how much I want to tell them. I got invited to a mom's night out next week, and I just... Should I, I just, sorry, I got invited to a mom's night out next week. Should I just tell them when they offer me a drink or should I just keep making excuses? Whatever you're comfortable with. I feel like there's so many fake excuses that you could come up with. I also feel like most of the times when I'm hanging out with moms, we actually don't drink. Like someone's always pregnant. Someone's always breastfeeding. Like some, I don't drink. Like I feel like it's okay to say no, especially when you have such young children, like they're in preschool it's not like everyone's getting lit up. Like, you got to be up early the next morning right? changing diapers. Like, 
I don't know. I, I, I don't think you should worry so much about it. And you can be honest if you feel like you want to open up to these people. And if you just don't feel like having that conversation, there are so many reasons why you could be like, oh, like the truth for me, I get such bad hangovers. I can't be a, mo- a hungover mom. No, but also I feel like you can and should be honest, but you also don't need to say like I'm in recovery. You just say I don't drink. Like plenty of people don't drink. Plenty of people don't drink. You don't. And then once you know these people, you can tell them your story and how you're at 12 years. But just say, no, I don't drink. Like Margaret Joseph doesn't drink. You know, it's like people don't drink. Yeah. So just I would say like I don't drink. Yeah, and I just and I also don't think that, I feel like, like drinking is germane to like motherhood friendships and like friendships for like new moms or young moms. Like it's not a huge part of the equation. You know, if you were going on spring break and you weren't like that's something else. But I feel like it's not even a major factor. I also think, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm literally not a mom, but I feel like having mom friends is really germane to survival of, you know, motherhood, like having people to commiserate with. And and I don't know, I would tell them this part of you, share share that with you, yeah. with them, you know? It could lead to like real connection. Yeah, I don't see why, why not to share, but everyone's different. So if there's a real reason why you don't want to share, there's other things you can do, but I think sharing would be nice. I think sharing would be nice too. Um, okay, dear Jackie and Claudia, recently I went on my final spring break trip of college with my five closest girlfriends. We stayed at my friend's dad's private resort where we were literally the only people there besides a security guard and a house manager. After the house manager left for the day and the guard wasn't there, we went skinny dipping in the pool. We laughed and giggled the whole time. It was so dark, you really couldn't see anything on anyone. However, when I told my boyfriend about it, he seemed upset with me. I told him it was about the act of feeling free and comfortable with my five closest girlfriends, but he still seemed annoyed. Did I violate the respect between us should i have opted out of the skinny dipping no so. your voice is a fucking loser like grow up yeah i don't unless see. you unless you guys are like hella religious or something and it violates sort of like your code of conduct for each other but if you're not like literally who cares if he's what jealous you're not a lesbian no i don't think he's i don't know i can't under skip into his frame of mind i think he's overreacting don't feel bad about it you did nothing wrong You literally did nothing wrong, but like, how do you resolve this? I think is the question. What are you going to pander and apologize? No, because I feel like that sets sets a bad precedent. Just because you have a feeling doesn't mean I need to apologize. Your feeling is wrong. Yeah, you could say like, I'm sorry that we weren't on the same page about something like that. Oh, I love, I love that. I love a skirt around apology where you say I'm sorry, but like you're not really taking responsibility. No, I'm not sorry for the thing you want me to be sorry for. Like, but I'm sorry that that was not something that I understood that you would be upset about. And next time I just won't fucking tell you, narc. That's, I think, a real lesson here as well. Like, not everybody needs to know everything. I Even the person completely you're, agree. like, closest to in this world, you know? Yeah. Like, it's irre- like nothing about what you did affects him whatsoever. And no, and this is, like, a special girlhood memory. Like, yeah. leave it alone. Yeah. Loser. He's just giving loser. Don't tell him next time. Yeah, no, that's the lesson here. Like, you know, he can't handle certain information, so he shouldn't get the security clearance. Much yeah. like Oppenheimer. He doesn't have the clearance. And neither did Oppenheimer, because you want to know why? He was a snitch. Well, he was a communist, but same thing. Snitch. No, like, he was really smart, but he was, like, low-key communist energy. So they weren't going to give him the highest level of security clearance, because, like, you know, do the work, but we're not going to give you that sort of level. Yeah, makes sense. It, it, it made sense at the time. Um, Okay, our third and final we have from one of our Gen Z toasters. And I love when one of our Gen Z toasters write in. Hey, Jackson Turd, I'm a high school senior and I need a prom date. I have a little over two months and I have no prospects. Please help, advice needed. Thanks. A swirly looking for a prom date. Prom is so hard. Prom is so hard because either like you have a boyfriend, which like nobody does, by the way, like normalize not having a boyfriend in high school, or you like go with a friend. And it's like, that's not fun. You just no. want like your crush to ask you out and that never happens. Yeah. I don't really know. What I'll say is, which it doesn't, it's not going to feel this way right now, but ultimately it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? So true. Don't put too many eggs in this basket. Like you will never remember who you went to prom with. Even if unless, you, even if you're Unless crush, you ended up marrying him, which right, would um, never happen either. Even if your crush asks you or you go with a friend or someone you're not that excited about, like, it doesn't matter. Your life is going to start when, after prom. Like, No, but also a prom date is just like a means to an end. Like you just need to go because that's like the societal standard. Like you go with a date, whatever. Find some someone to go with. And then like once you get there, like you just hang out with your friends. You literally don't even hang out with your date. Yeah. You know? I would just like choose someone at random. 
And know that it's really not that serious. It has no bearing on your romantic future. It's just simply a means to an end. Like you need to do the pictures. You don't want to like, you know, you can go without without a date. But then like in the pictures, you're sort yeah, of you like that. you need some arm candy. Yeah. And I don't believe in like not having a date because like women empowerment. Like you need a date. Okay. Yeah, it's still the prom. Yeah. You need a and date sure for the photos. Like, you, and if you had told me this, I would I would say shut up. I No, it prom. means more than anything. It, it does mean more than anything in that moment. And I understand that. I'm just letting you know, like zoomed out, it, it doesn't mean what you think it means, but I understand in this moment, like it means everything. I would just look around the cafeteria. Look, see what you're looking for. Pick yeah, someone would, at random. Say, you, uh, I'm going to make you my prom date. And I wouldn't like, you know, obviously we, we watch so many movies. You want to go with the coolest guy. The girls who go with the coolest guys and never have any fun, the coolest guys are like dumb and moronic and can't hold a conversation. I would seriously go with like, you know, the nerd who takes off his glasses and everybody realizes he's handsome. One, that's like the type of guy you actually have like the most potential to actually marry. And those guys like always end up making a lot of money. You know, the jocks like always end up, you know, with with no sort of career prospects. The nerds, they start companies. You know, they get patents that, you know, cr generate a billion dollars in revenue. Like, I would go for the the nerdy guy. You honestly probably would A, have the best time and B, the most potential. Yeah. I like it. Switch and it he's he's just as worried as you are that no one's going to ask him, you know? Oh, true. So just strike up a conversation and, and just like drop the hint. Like guys like that need to be pushed a little bit. So, you know, if you wait around for him to ask, like he might not, just go over and be like, do you have a date for prom? And then he'll be like, no. And then you say me neither. And then he'll be like, oh, I should ask this girl, you know? Yeah. Love that for you. Yeah, that's exciting. And prom is so exciting. And this is what I always say to our Gen Z swirlies who write in. Like, you're a high school senior. Oh, my God. And what month is it? Oh, my God. It's like the second half, second semester, you know? You don't have any work to do. You know where you're going to college. This is the most fabulous time of your life. They write, you know, epic novels about and movies about this time of your life. Enjoy it. Don't be bogged down by insecurities. Oh, who am I going to go prom with? Nobody fucking cares. Like, eventually, like, people forget about it literally the next day. So just enjoy this time in your life. Like, you're obviously a toaster, so you have an amazing head on your shoulders. You probably already know this. But just, like, enjoy. Live in the moment. Get off your phone, you know? I'm so happy for you. Enjoy. Yeah. I love that. I love you. Oh, love you too. I have, you know, got to start my day, you know? Busy, busy. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Toast and Lane. I'm Morning Show where we tell the fast five stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give us video thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere. Podcasts can be found on Spotify, Jim Stitcher, Public Radio, Ivory Cast, Box, Lobby, Swift, Sun, Ida, Solid Podcast, Five Star View, About a Beautiful Sending, and Wickedly Talented We Are. Love, Love ya. ya. Oh. Bye.